My name's Kent Hovind. I was a high school science teacher for 15 years. Okay, you're right. I couldn't do any video about creationist bullshit without including scientist Dr. Kent Hovind. Here's a clip I played in my introduction to the series. If you date a sample of known age, I mean, you know how old it is, like the, uh, a tree ring. Carbon dating doesn't work. It's interesting that Hovind admits that dendrochronology, tree ring dating, works. Dendrochronologists have managed to date trees back 10,000 years using this method, which doesn't quite gel with Hovind's belief that the Earth is only 6,500 years old. Never mind, it's this claim I want to focus on. If you date a sample of known age, I mean, you know how old it is, like the... Uh, a tree ring. Carbon dating doesn't work. But of course it works. It's been done. It was done for the first time as far back as 1949. Samples of known age were carbon dated in blind tests and the results confirmed the known age. If this didn't happen, then carbon dating would be useless and it wouldn't be used. For an explanation of how carbon dating works, see my video The Age of Our World Made Easy on the Potholer 54 channel. Hovind won't put his money where his mouth is and send a sample of known age to a testing lab to prove that carbon dating doesn't work. Well, maybe he did, and he prefers to keep the result secret. Or maybe he knows it's already been done and prefers to spout yet another Hovind lie to the gullible masses. Hovind has learned that it's far easier to cloud the issue with nonsense like this. A living mollusk shell, carbon dated at 2,300 years old. Well, here we are, 14 years later, carbon dating is still not working. Hovind doesn't mention the title of the paper he cites here. It's called Radiocarbon Dating, Fictitious Results with Mollusk Shells. As the title implies, what they were trying to show in their paper is that carbon dating doesn't work under certain circumstances. They state that right up front, in the abstract. Evidence is presented to show that modern mollusk shells from rivers can have anomalous radiocarbon ages, owing mainly to the incorporation of inactive carbon from humus. This is now known as the reservoir effect, and it's well understood. Animals that feed on the bottom of rivers, lakes and oceans aren't getting their carbon from the air, as most plants do. The carbon has been filtered down, and sometimes even dissolved from carbon-based rocks. So the carbon-14 content is greatly reduced. Any sample taken for carbon dating will give a false reading. Back in 1963, Keith and Anderson were among the first to alert biologists to this problem. The whole purpose of their paper was to warn biologists that carbon dating doesn't work under certain circumstances. It was very easy then for Hovind to turn that prescient warning into this. And of course, gullible audiences believe it. Carbon dating indicated live snails had died 27,000 years before. And if it's not snails that make their way around the creationist urban myth factory, it's a 1,300-year-old seal. A freshly killed seal carbon dated at 1,300 years old. Still not working, folks. It took a while to track this down because Hovind doesn't give us the title of the paper or the author. But the paper referred to seems to be this one, written by Wakefield Dort, then geology professor at the University of Kansas. And just like Keith and Anderson, Dort mentions the 1,300-year-old carbon dating result as a warning that carbon dates are inaccurate in marine organisms. And, of course, we know why. Once again, this is the reservoir effect. Other limitations of carbon dating have also been found. A very obvious one is the water around Antarctica, which began its life thousands of years earlier in the North Atlantic and North Pacific. As it journeys south, a lot of the dissolved carbon-14 is depleted, so any carbon that ends up in the food chain around Antarctica will give animals that ingest it a greater apparent age. And guess who jumped on this as proof that carbon dating doesn't work? Living penguins date 8,000 years old. So carbon dating isn't a one-size-fits-all method of analysis. It works best on organisms like plants that draw their carbon directly from the atmosphere. It's less effective on animals that ingest the plants, and it works extremely badly on animals that are ingesting carbon from marine environments. But Hovind's obsession with carbon dating is a bit bizarre, because carbon dating isn't very useful in dating fossils or the age of the Earth. As I explained in The Age of Our World Made Easy, carbon-14 has a half-life of around 5,000 years, so it's only used to date carbon-based material less than 60,000 years old. Hovind, who claims to be a scientist, gives us an inkling that he sort of understands this. Well, this is a dinosaur bone, by the way. It's been replaced by minerals. Whoa, hold on before you get to the butt. Did I just hear you say it's been replaced by minerals? 
so in fact there's no carbon in it. And this would seem to be rather a crucial requirement if you want to perform carbon dating. Minor point, apparently. They start with the assumption that dinosaurs lived 70 million years ago. If I took this to a laboratory and said, would you please date this, they would say, oh, well, we'd have to use something other than carbon dating because this is too old for carbon dating. No, Ken, they wouldn't. They'd say, Oi, Havin, we can't carbon date this. There's no f***ing carbon in it. And didn't you say the same thing yourself just a minute ago? It's been replaced by minerals. Now, you would have thought that an absence of carbon would dissuade even the dumbest creationist from taking a completely mineralized fossil to be carbon dated in a laboratory. And you'd be wrong. Hugh Miller in Columbus, Ohio, had four dinosaur bone samples carbon dated. They told him they were 20,000 years old. He didn't tell them they were dinosaur bones. If he would have said, this is a dinosaur bone and I want you to carbon date it, they would have said, oh, we can't date that because it's too old. No, they would have said, Oi, Miller! We can't carbon date that, you idiot! There's no f***ing carbon in it! So if there's no carbon in it, how come it dated to 20,000 years old? Well, we now have to tell the Miller's tale, as told by Mike Lafferty, science correspondent for the Columbus Dispatch. In 1991, he tracked down the place where Miller had got his dinosaur sample, the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. Miller didn't tell them he was going to carbon date these pieces of mineralized fossil, because if he had, they'd have said to him, There's no f***ing carbon in it! So he did something completely out of character for a creationist, and didn't come clean about what he wanted to do with the sample. Unaware that his precious bone specimen was about to be destroyed in a pointless exercise for the creationist cause, James King, the director of the Carnegie Museum, warned Miller that the bones had been covered with shellac and other unknown preservatives. Shellac, of course, is an organic material chock full of carbon. To a real chemist preparing to carbon date a sample, this would have rung alarm bells about the danger of contamination. But not Miller. He sent his samples to the University of Arizona's Laboratory of Isotope Geochemistry for carbon dating. Then a second alarm bell was sounded. Austin Long, professor of geochemistry at the University of Arizona, told Miller that there was no collagen in the bones, and therefore no carbon. But, Long said, there is a lot of carbon in the shellac. Look, Miller, do you need this spelt out? If you carbon date this sample, you won't get a date for the fossil, because there's no f***ing carbon in it! You'll get a date for the preservative. And that's exactly what he got. Carbon dating also popped up in this video, which was nominated for a golden crocodile. Hello, YouTubers. Big Jerry here, ready for round two of uh, answering an evolutionist and atheist's questions. These are I have to be quite strict about the criteria and say it doesn't qualify. Big Jerry's video is a bit like a sitcom pilot for NBC, an answer guy who doesn't actually have any answers. So you may think I'm simply putting him in here for a bit of comic relief. But I'd say, yeah. Number nine, how do you explain carbon dating and radiometric dating showing the Earth not as 6,000 years old, but billions of years old? Now, this is another one of those I actually had to stop what I was doing and do some research on. A lot of it I already knew, but I just thought I'd, uh, you know, read some of this stuff off for you because a lot of it's actually pretty interesting. And honestly, I don't trust, uh, ra you know, radiometric and carbon dating at all. But, uh, you know, bear with me here. Here's a little article from a... Uh, an, an article, okay. When a date differs from that expected, researchers readily invent excuses for rejecting the result. The common application of such posterior reasoning shows that radiometric dating has serious problems. Now I'm not doubting Big Jerry's abilities as the answer guy, but it seems that the extent of his research is simply to type in the words radiometric dating into ChristianAnswers.net and then read whatever it says off the screen without necessarily understanding it. Am I right? 23 million years by the argon argon method. The authors decided that was too old according to their beliefs about the place of the fossils in the evolutionary grand scheme of things. So they looked at some basalt further removed from the fossils and selected 17 of 26 samples to get an acceptable maximum age of 4.4 million years. And that's all the time I have for this edition of Answering an Evolutionist. Uh, hope you all stick around with me for part three. Uh, be back soon.